You take a 12 or 13 year old kid in a situation like we were in and in this junior high camp, the kid, the kid confesses. You know, kids will confess their sin uh, more readily oftentimes than um, adults. So the kid confesses their, their sin. And uh, okay, so now we need, some, we need some help, right? And so we take this kid and he's got a dad. His dad's sitting in the church all the time. So we take this kid and we take him to his dad and we say, look, man, the kid tells his dad. We're there, support. Kid tells his dad, and then we say, he's going to need your help. I mean, to come out of something like that, what he's been doing every day, he's going to need your help. He's going to need your love. He's going to need your support. He's going to need your accountability. Why don't you be covenant eyes partners with him? Okay, so he can see everything you're looking at on the internet, and he can learn how to be a godly man on the internet, and you can see everything he's looking at. You're not filtering, but you're teaching him to be a godly man on the internet problem is dad's over here in the darkness hiding something and the problem is the kid has come out into the light confessed his sin and he's finding you know what he's finding freedom see now that they know God didn't smite me see the, the, the enemy will tell you if you confess your sin, if you, if you tell God that, he will smite you. He will wreck your life. He will ruin your life. And certainly if you tell his people that, they will, oh, they, they, what they will do to you is worse. See, that's a lie of the enemy. And so we, we kind of just begin to strap our own hands and our feet and we put ourselves in this bondage of conditional acceptance. So for that kid, it'd be like, be like, you know, God can never accept me, so I'm going to stay in the dark. Well, we, we try to hook him up with his dad. The problem is his dad's got a hidden sin that he's been hiding since he was 12, and now he's 40-something. And so when you try to pull dad into the light with the kid, the dad's like on the fence, like, I want it for my kid, but if I give, if I, if my covenant eyes partner with my son, he's going to find out. And so there's, there's like this, yeah, we'll find other ways. I mean, we'll figure this out. Maybe one of the youth leaders could be his partner because dad wants to stay in darkness because what dad is afraid of is, it, well, what he's in is this bondage of conditional acceptance. He's believed it since he was 12 or 13 years old. If he comes out, instantly God's going to vaporize him, right? <laughs> That's what we all think. The thing is, that's not what happens. You see, the gospel sheds light in the darkness. And when there is light, it, it, imagine how, how good this lie is. In this situation, you think it's better to be in the dark. But if I put you in a really dark place and put one light out there and you needed help, you would run toward the what? Light. But in this situation, Satan's got you thinking uh, because of this bondage of, of conditional acceptance, I can't go there because if I go there, there's danger. There's real danger there. This is safe. How backwards is that? And you plug in, plug in whatever sin you want to talk about, you know? How backwards is that? So when we step out of darkness and into the light, what we find is unconditional acceptance. There's a story in Luke 15 that all of you in red studied this weekend. It's really, it's cool. we call it the story of the prodigal son. I think it's a lot, has a lot to do with the father. So the story goes like this. This is prodigal son. He's rude. He's insensitive and he's a jerk. He comes to his father who's still alive. I would never do this to my dad, but this guy in this story, he does this. Comes to his father and says, go ahead and give me my inheritance now. So I can live it up. And the father gives him his inheritance. And he takes the inheritance. And he goes to a far off place. 
away from his network of people, away from everything he's ever known. It's like, I'm going to get away. It's like he moves out of the light and into the darkness, and he has all this money. And so he goes into a far off place. We think, as we look at the story, that's the Decapolis, the city of, uh, the, the, the region of 10 cities where all the pagans lived. We think that. Jesus is telling a story and saying a far off place because there's pigs in this story, right? In the story, the young man, he flounders all of his wealth. He womanizes, he drinks, I mean, you name it, he does it. He's got nothing left and he finds himself in utter darkness and he begins to hope to himself, if I could just eat what the pigs eat, that would be great. And he finds himself eating pig slop until one day, one day the man comes to his senses, the scripture says. And he thinks to himself, you know, it'd be better to be a slave in my father's house than it would be to eat pig slop the rest of my life in bondage. I'd rather be a slave to my dad than a slave to the world. And so he gets maybe like one foot free in this proverbial bondage and he goes back to his father. Now, <clears throat> any of you that have a prodigal child, you're going to know this to be true. The father in this picture is portrayed as waiting and watching for his son to come home. I mean, parents, have you ever been in one of those seasons? Maybe you're in one now where you're just like... son comes home. I can imagine. He sees him from a long way off. The son comes home in the story, and I know the son is thinking, I'm just going to fall at his feet and say, just let me be a slave. That would be better. That would be the best I can hope for. And he shows up at the father's house. The father's been waiting, and the father could have said, by mercy, I, I have mercy on you. You can be a slave. Here, slave clothes. The slaves sleep out there. Here is slave, is slave food. And here is slave work. That would have been merciful. But that's not what he did. You see, the father, he looks at his son. He takes a robe and puts it on him. Then he takes the family ring. I mean, this is so symbolic. He takes the ring and he puts it on his finger. And you know what this says? This says, you are mine. Mine. I don't care what you've done or where you've been. You're mine. You're my son. And go kill something and let's grill it and make it smell great and then let's eat it. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> my son is home. That's the story. And what it teaches us is that God is a God who never wants us to be in the bondage of conditional acceptance, but always wants us to understand that he is the father waiting and watching, hoping and knowing that when you come home, when you come out of the darkness and into the light, there's a ring for your finger. You get a new inheritance, an eternal one. But the enemy would love for you to think it's better to stay in the darkness. Faith in Christ frees us from the bondage of conditional acceptance. There's really only two ways to respond. When, when your eyes are illuminated to this bondage of conditional acceptance, there's really two ways. One, you have to repent of believing a lie, especially if, if you're a believer and you confess Christ and receive the gospel and you then did something that was sinful and maybe that snowballed on you and you're believing to yourself right now, like there is no way God would accept me when I come back to him. You have to repent of believing a lie that somehow God's love for you is dependent on something else other than Jesus. It's not true. 
you might have some repenting to do. I used to hate the word repentance. I grew up in a religious and churchy home. And when that word was used, that means that I did something wrong and I was about to get punished. Unless I repented. So I learned to repent. So I didn't lose things. Isn't that what I'm talking about? This is what I'm talking about. Confess Christ. I'm so free to be exactly who I am. You can know everything about me. It doesn't matter because Jesus. But then I begin to believe some lies. I begin to sin. I begin to hide some things. And pretty soon, even though I'm free, I've tied myself back up. And here I am. Well, the only way to come back to freedom is to repent. And repent, it is a Hebrew word, teshuvah. Here's what it means. I don't even have to say it. Just watch. It means turn the other direction. Come back. It's what the prodigal son did. It's not to avoid punishment. It is to write a relationship with your father. And he's always like this. Will you have consequences? Yeah. That guy knows, you know, in the story, he had consequences for floundering his wealth. All of this. You have consequences for looking at pornography? Yeah. You have consequences, dads, when you won't engage your son in that way because you're hiding yourself? Yeah. But the answer is to believe that God will accept me because of my faith in Christ. And your exercise of faith is repentance. So for a dad who's hiding over here, he just needs to come out. is to say to his son, I struggle with this too. We need help. So let's do this together. Let's get another man from our church if we need to, to help us both. But it's being honest, being true, and repenting. You know what lesson your son would remember from all that? It wouldn't be, I'm not supposed to look at pornography. You know what the lesson would be? (sighs) The gospel is trustworthy enough that my dad believed that he believed it so much that he told me his own sin and confessed it and walked back to God. Your kid will not forget the gospel in that moment. So quit hiding.